Welcome to this week's episode of Bridge to Faith. I'm your host, Yusuf Estes, and for the next few minutes, we're going to be talking about faith, what it is, how you can get it, and how it applies to today's world. And then following that, we'll have somebody's particular story of their bridge to faith. All of that and more is coming up right here. What are some of the misconceptions that people have today? Well, let's ask Sheikh Mutahir Sabri. He happens to be right with us here now. I'm going to ask, Salaamu Alaikum wa Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuh. Wa Alaikum as wa Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuh. How are you, Sheikh? Alhamdulillah. Sheikh, what we've been talking about with the folks is the subject of misconceptions. And what are, in your estimation, what what's a major misconception some people might have? Well, one of the... Major one of the major misconceptions that people have today about Muslims is that we are terrorists. Of course, and this is something that is promoted widely throughout the media the world over. And while there are radical elements within the Muslim community, uh, Islam can cannot certainly be judged by the actions of a few deviant persons. No more than any other faith or religion could be judged by the actions of theirs. Okay, there's a misconception people have. They say that uh, a religion could be based on just what a few actions of some people. So, and certainly Islam is the enemy of terrorism. Let's find out what some other misconceptions people might have. We love your show, by the way, ZadineShow.com. And I want to ask you, Eddie, a misconception you know that people have about Islam, what would you say it might be? Many non-Muslims believe that Muslims worship a man called Muhammad. Muslims worshiping a man called Muhammad. Now there's a misconception. Yes, a great misconception. Another misconception. Salaam alaikum. Alaikum salam Tell us where you're from. I am from Bangladesh. Bangladesh. And your name? Mr. Awliullah. Mr. Awliullah. And I want to ask you a misconception people might have. What do they say? This is we kiss the ground five times a day. <laughs> You're right. People do say that. Yeah. Big misconception, but we don't do that. No, no. no we're praying to Allah. Pray with Almighty Allah. Yeah, there's another misconception. Yes. <laughs> do you know that when Moses, Alexan, I'm peace be upon him, was taking the children of Israel away from Pharaoh? Because they got away. They escaped. And they were going like, let's go, you know. And they were bringing all their goodies and stuff that they had from Egypt. And they had lots of stuff, man, lots of stuff. And they were going, let's get out of here. <laughs> and they went and they went and they went. And then they came up to the, what's called the Red Sea. Red Sea. It's Baha, big sea. Now, this sea is so big. I've been there, by the way. And I looked across as far as I could see. And you know what? I couldn't see the other side. That's how big it is. It's not like a river. No, it's not like this little pond. No, it's so big. You look and you look and you can't see the other side. I even got in a boat and we went and we went and we went half of the day. We still couldn't see the other side. So it was big. Now, when they got to the water and they were up against the water like this, they realized Pharaoh changed his mind. And here Pharaoh came with all of his army and these guys are not just some people going out for a picnic, you know what I mean? They were having their weapons and everything, and they were coming, coming, coming right at the poor children of Israel. And here they're trapped right up against the water. And you know what? Instead of saying, oh, Allah, help us, you know what they did? They got mad and they blamed Moses. Yeah. They said, look at you. You brought us out to this mess. Oh, we didn't want to do that. So what happened? Allah made something amazing happen. And he told Moses, stretch out your stick, same stick, Asa. Remember the Asa? Yeah, yeah. Stretch it out, and then, then he popped the top of the water. Guess what happened? The water opened up. Yeah, it is so opened up. It opened up so wide and so far apart that all the people could walk through and not even get their feet wet. Now, how can this happen? Could this happen? No, this is not possible. I don't believe any person can do such a thing, even no matter how much equipment you have, 
and you're not going to take the Red Sea and just go, shh, shh. go ahead, take a walk. Can't happen. It's not going to happen. So only Allah can do it. You're right. But Allah did it. And it was a big proof to the children of Israel, and it was a big proof to Pharaoh. Children of Israel went in, and they followed Moses. I'm sure they must have been a little bit scared. What do you think? Would you be afraid? Well, I'd be afraid. With water up way up like that, water way up like that. <laughs> but they went through. And as they were going through, Pharaoh went in after them. Now, I'm sure somebody with Pharaoh was going, hey, hey, are you stupid? What are you doing? But he's like, go. So they were going, you know. But guys, imagine somebody with Pharaoh. <laughs> but guys, you know, look at this. This is not real. This is something weird. What's going on? And then what happened? Well, the children of Israel got on the other side. They were safe. No problem. But what happened to Pharaoh? Well, Allah closed the water in on them. Then the Quran came in between Allah closed the water. Exactly. Exactly. And guess what happened? Not quite. Not quite. He was drowning. And he was saying, okay, okay, and now I believe in the God of Moses. Now he's going to say it. Now, but he said that before. But every time he did it, he lied. Because as soon as the difficulty went away, he went back to his disbelief and saying that he was a God, right? So what happened? A big miracle. The water opened up, it went through, came on him. He said, I believe in the God of Moses. Now the angels, the angels see this guy. They know he's a bad dude, right? But they didn't like that. So what do they want to do? They want to shut him up. And they're going to put hand over his mouth so he can't say it. But it doesn't matter to Allah. Because Allah knows what's in the heart. It doesn't matter just you say something with your mouth, does it? Now look what Allah said. Allah said in the Quran that he is going to preserve this Pharaoh, preserve him in his body as a sign, as a sign. And here we are in these days, an amazing sign has come true. Because you see, some years ago, there was a scientist who lived in France. And they asked him to come to Egypt to examine Pharaoh's body. Now, there were many pharaohs. But when they examined this body and they opened it up and they looked in, he said, this person died from drowning. This person died from what? Drowning. He said, this must be the real pharaoh from the time of Moses. Ah, oh, I can't believe it. Now, remember, this is a man who is a scientist. This is a man who is a very smart person. And he said, this must be the man who drowned with this pharaoh. And guess what? His body is preserved. Yes or no? Yeah, it's right there. Only this happened thousands of years ago. And guess what else happened? They took the body of this pharaoh and put it in a real fancy-looking, you know, display, and they took it all around the world. I saw it in Chicago. The same guy, pharaoh, himself, and I saw him. How? All dried up, mummified, big holes where his eyes ought to be. But that was him, and they said he drowned. Amazing. Would you consider that a proof? I saw. I saw the guy. And I looked at it and I thought, wow, that's amazing, isn't it? So Allah said in the Quran that he had talked about Moses from before, from before, and said, I'm going to preserve him. So when did this Quran come? Long time after Moses and long before they discovered Pharaoh. So there's a proof, yes? It's only one of the many, many proofs that Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa is one of the messengers of Allah. In fact, he's the last and the final messenger, but we're going to talk more about that later. All I want to talk about in this session that we're having now is this beautiful subject of proof. What is the proof? And so we look to other things for proof, too. Now I want to mention something to you about some other prophets. 
because our subject only being proof, so it doesn't really matter which prophet we talk about. But I grew up as a Christian, and I knew a lot about Jesus. Peace be upon him. And I love Jesus very, very much because all Muslims love Jesus. He's very special. One of the miracles that came with Jesus, you know what it was? From the very beginning, because he had no father, and he was a miracle. And his mother is the best woman that Allah created. That's what Allah said in the Quran. And then from her, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made Jesus. And Allah calls him Isa ibn Maryam, which means Jesus, the son of Maryam. Or Mary. They say Mary today, but Maryam was really the name for her. It's amazing. Amazing because there is no father. There is no husband. There is no man involved. Now, check this out. Let's back up a second. Back up. A woman can't have a baby, and she didn't see any man at all. It's impossible. So how did it happen? Because it's a miracle. Now, she was a very good girl. She was the best girl. In fact, she was so good that she lived a special life in a special place. And it was that they used to check on her, and she was very, like, religious, very sweet, praying to Allah. And they would be amazed because all of a sudden food would be there. And it was food that was out of season. Delicious bananas or mangoes, oranges, lemons, many things that they said, well, this is not the season for that. How is she having all this food? Because how? The angels, I guess, bring it to her, huh? And then... When she meets Jibril, who is Jibril? Remember? Angel? Angel? Right. Angel of Allah. Jibril, or Gabriel as they call him, is there. And he's talking to her, and she's saying, Who are you? Stay back away from me. Fear Allah. Get away from me. Who are you? And he said, I'm an angel from Allah. I'm Jibril. I'm the, uh, the spirit which come from Allah. And he began to tell her she's going to have a baby. She said, how is that going to happen? No man has ever touched me. He said, even though, whenever Allah wants something to happen, what will happen? It's going to happen. Allah just says, kun, fayakun. Be an idiot. Exactly. It's easy for Allah. Now I want you to think about something. This is a miracle. And even today, all the Muslims say so, and all the Christians say so, that it's a miracle birth of Jesus. But have you thought about this? How about Eve? Eve. Huh? How was she born? Hawa. You remember Hawa, the story of Hawa? We talked about her. How did she come about? Because Allah took her out of the rib, a bone, from who? Adam. How? How did Allah take a bone out of Adam? And make it become a woman. I think that's a pretty big miracle too, do you? Yeah. And wait a minute. What about Adam? How did Allah make Adam? Didn't he make him from dirt? Clay? Yeah. How? Because Allah says, Kun, fire kun. So the creation of Adam, the creation of his wife, the creation of Jesus is all the same to Allah. Kun, fire kun. B. And, and that brings us to a wind-up on our program right now, because we're going to wind down with that. We're going to give big salam to everybody, and we ask for Allah's peace to be with all of those who seek truth. Amen. <laughs> somebody's bridge to faith we're right here on the yacht here in the marina of i'll get you the whole story about it just right now from our guest our special guest today jibril salam alaikum how are you alhamdulillah Fine. tell, tell you us your today. name my name is jibril mason jibril mason but i think you changed your uh, name my name was eric mason eric eric and became a jibril islam yes and i became gabriel Gabriel is yes. the English version of Jibril, which is Arabic. The angel Gabriel. It's the angel. same one. Ah, ha, ha, ha. Gabriel is the same one. 
All right. Now, what we wanted to want to ask you, where, where, where are we right now? We're at uh, Mursah Halam in uh, north of Al Jitta. It's a um, uh, marina. Uh, on this marina, we have uh, restaurants, uh, recreation facilities. We bring many overseas guests diving with us in a company that is owned by His Highness called Dream Divers. Dream Divers. Yes, sir. Okay, now let's come to something that I'm sure our, our audience are really puzzled about. You have a British accent, yet you're here in Arabia, and you're saying some Arabic words. You have an Arabic name. What's going on with all of that? Well, when I was younger in Nigeria, my mother's Italian a Catholic. My father was a British Protestant. Uh, they met post-war and had four children. I was one of them, the youngest boy. And then my father was working for the Nigerian government for many, many years. And we were with our parents. And I saw that many of my father's workers were Muslims, Hausa people from the north. These are the Hausa people. Mm, the Hausa people, indeed. Okay. And uh, being younger, uh, more impressionable, I, I wondered why are all the security, why are all the truck drivers, why are all the helpers Muslims? And my father said, because they're good people, you can trust them. So then I... So he was saying, know. wait a minute, hold it, the, the media today is saying the opposite, saying uh, Muslims are bad people, you can't trust them, and your father was saying they're good people, you can trust them. There's another misconception being cleared up right away. Uh, my son was born in Saudi Arabia, he's now at university in England. They will never show a photograph of my son playing football with his Saudi friends, but they will publish a picture of my son fighting with his Saudi friends. No, uh, the media do have a lot to answer for. In this context, especially with their perception of Islam, uh, Muslims are like anybody else. There are good Muslims, there are bad Muslims. But Muslims uh, practicing Islam, uh, they are 90%, the majority are good people. Just good people, huh? That's all they have to be, good people. Okay, now I have a question. Did you become a Muslim? Of course. Yeah, how long ago? Oh, five years, six years. Five or six years Five, ago. six years I reverted to Islam. But I've had my Quran since Nigeria, since I was a boy, given to be my, given to me. In fact, I'll show it to you later. It's in my car. Okay, we're going to hold it. you to that. We're yeah, going no, no, to get to see the Quran, I the original one. Without, I never travel without it. This is the, you've had it for how many years? Oh, gosh, 40. 40 years? What took you so long to decide to be a Muslim? Because I wanted, uh, I wanted to revert to Islam for me, not for anything else, just for me and my God. And it came a time when there was no option, there, there was no choice. It was uh, to revert to Islam, th uh, th uh, to, to the one God, the only God. I mean, God doesn't sit at a table with. 20 different color telephones, huh? You know, I'm speaking to a Muslim, I'm speaking to a Buddhist. There, there, there is only one God. And Alhamdulillah, it's Allah is the God. And Muhammad is the messenger of God. That's it. So that's why I joined Islam. Okay, now what happened after you came to Islam? Did people think you were crazy? Some couldn't believe it. Many, uh, uh, even, even I find it difficult. Many accepted it. Many accepted it right off. Many who've been here a while understand that Islam is, a, a, it's a fine road to take. It's not uh, the winding path, huh? Many people did accept it right away. Some know, some, some said, Eric, how can you be a Muslim? You wear shorts, your hair is long, you, you say dude at occasion. But uh, Muslims are people, huh? like anybody else. You know, don't get the uh, idea that they all wear the tahir and uh, they throw bombs, huh? They don't. <laughs> <laughs> they don't, eh? This is the exception to the rule. So, well, you brought up the subject of bombs. One of the misconceptions that we've been talking about in our program today is the idea that somebody says that terrorism is a part of Islam, Islam is a part of terrorism, but it seems that you're agreeing with the, what we've heard from our scholars to, telling us that, no, that's the opposite. Of course, there are thugs in all religions. Thugs? Yeah, in all religions. You can't stop it. So that's your... What, the fingers are not the same, huh? Uh-huh. They are not. There are good Muslims and bad Muslims, as there are good Catholics and bad Catholics. But uh, no, 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 no. Islam is not. So you're saying anybody throwing bombs is a thug? I say anybody, anybody, earning, uh, anybody arming innocents are thugs. Yes, that's not what Islam's about. It's not about killing people. It's not. It's about discourse, about 
uh, understanding. And that's what we have here in Saudi Arabia. It's a wonderful, a very fine country. It really is. Oh, I wouldn't be here for 36 years. I'd have left 30 years ago. How do you like being a Muslim? I, I, it's great. I love it. It, it makes you, uh, what do they say in America, laid back? Laid back? Yeah. It, it is. It's, uh, the, miscon the problem with the West is Islam's a brotherhood. You are a brother, he's a brother, she's a sister. If you harm someone's brother, the rest will protect them. Huh? That's the problem. They don't understand that. If you hurt one, you hurt all. No, it's a brotherhood. It really is. It really is. And it's very nice to know that. Okay, I've got another question for you. Go Five ahead. years you've been Muslim. Now. <clears throat> Have you had, you're here in Jeddah right now in Saudi Arabia, which is the seaport, not far from Mecca. Sure. The place where they have the holy pilgrimage, they call it sure. what? What do they call that? The holy pilgrimage, the Hajj. Hajj. Of course. And have you done the Hajj? I have not. I'm doing the Hajj next year with the uh, Jidda Dawa Center with some of my European colleagues. We all got together and we all want to do it together. All different nationalities, Americans, Germans, French, Italians, British. What if we join you? Oh, more than welcome. More than welcome. I love this, but I love this attitude. I love no, no, it. no, but you'd very hurry up, eh? Why it's is that? filling up, it's filling up. I've booked already. Ah. So you'd better, better hurry up. Otherwise, you're not going to get in there. Okay. But I've, uh, I, I've done uh, Umrah twice on the 27th Ramadan, which is uh, very nice. I visited the Prophet's Mosque in uh, Medina, which is also... Ah. I, I think you're going to Medina when? Tomorrow? We're on our way today. You're on your way today? Advice. Advice. Uh, be a good person. Uh, it, it, it doesn't take much. Uh, read the Quran. Get yourself a copy of this book. It, it's... It's it's a book of it really is a book of wisdom. It's a book of ways, huh? But don't have to wait 35 years. No, not like me. <laughs> go there when you're go there younger. But no, no, no. When you're more mature, you understand it better. Really? Yeah. yeah. That's the way it is. Words of wisdom. We really enjoyed that. I'm glad you can say that because I'm yes. not a learned person. Yeah. Well, these Thank are you. these are good words to live Thank by. You. Thank you. Thank you. We're very happy to have you on the program and look forward to more in the future. You're more than welcome. Exactly. Uh, like, and we're looking forward to a chance to be together Shall again. I? Yes. Please come next year. Yes. But book now. Book it's now. Filling up. More good advice. Get your name book on the list. Now get your name on the list. Yeah. To go out and have a good time and do some deep sea diving. Sure. Until next time, I'm Yusuf Estes reminding myself and you about the peace. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Well, that's it for this week's episode of Bridge to Faith. Remember our website, bridgetofaith.com. Until next time, peace. Assalamu alaikum. <laughs>